All right, well, with that, I guess I'll call the meeting to order at 5.30 um, and welcome everybody back after what, what seemed to be a pretty efficient deliberation process. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Rosie here in a second and just wanna ask if, everybody, if you're not speaking, if you can um, please mute your mic so we're not getting any background information. And then um, while Rosie calls attendance, if everyone could, if Rosie could, or if everyone could review the minutes from the last meeting, if you haven't already, just so we can get those approved shortly. And uh, with that, I'll let Rosie call attendance. And thanks again for being here. And then if we have people coming in, Rosie, we can just add them uh, as they as they join the meeting. Sounds good. Okay. I'm just going to um, go from the top and call attendance. Uh, Ryan Fisher, Jason Tamura. Um, he said he might not be able to make it on the call. Um, Angel Lopez. Present. Nice. Thank you. I see you. Esther Acosta. I see Esther. Here. Patricia Solorio. Yes, here. Thank you. Angie Bolden. Yes, I'm here. Robert Doyle, I see I see Bob. Yvonne Teniente, I also see Yvonne. Thank here. you. Jennifer. Hi. Hi, Yvonne. Jennifer Camacho Tiburcio. I don't see Jennifer. Tim Seaford, I see Tim. Jose Aguilera Galvan. I don't see Jose. Ronald Jacobs. I don't see Ronald either. Rosalie Marquez, I do see you. And Isaac Baruman, also I see you. Thank you. Did I miss anybody? No. Okay. That is it right. for attendance. Thanks. All right. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve the me minutes from the last meeting. A second. And then uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And is anyone opposed? And are there any abstentions? Thanks, everybody. Um, and then uh, I don't know, Rosie, maybe you can let me know if we have anybody in the. No, we do not have anybody here from the public, although I will make an announcement just to make sure if there's anybody from the public who would like to speak on an item that is not agendized, you can do so now. All right, does not look like we have anybody. We can move on to item five. Would you like me to just continue, Ryan? Yeah, please. Perfect. So update on the Block Grants Advisory Committee vacancy. We do have one vacancy and that has not been filled by uh, the council person. Uh, in charge, I believe it is uh, Councilwoman uh, Waterfield. So she has not appointed anybody to the committee. <clears throat> also, just a reminder to committee members to please submit your Form 700. You all should have received an email from our city clerk. And also <clears throat> ethics training. So ethics training, I believe, is every two years. So if it's been a couple years since you have had ethics training or if you've never had ethics training because you are new to the committee, you will need to take that. It is mandatory. The links are included on the agenda, but if you need them sent to you in any other way, please let us know. Any questions on that before we move on to an update on our existing capital and public service activities? Rosie, what's the deadline on the ethnics training? 
for us? That is a great question. And while um, Alicia, while Alicia goes over the update on existing capital and public service activities, I can I can find a deadline for you. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. We'll go into the capital project um, update for March. So for Recreation and Parks Department, Chapel Plaza Rehab, which is a 2020-21 project. Uh, the bid was awarded to new in construction and the pre-construction meeting will take place tomorrow. Um, so that project's underway. The city of Santa Maria looks like we have Ron. Um, Rosie, I just added Ron to the, the meeting. Um, for the ADA pedestrian safety and accessibility improvements, which is a current fiscal year 21-22 project, the bid opening took place on January 18th, and the bid was awarded to JJ Fisher. Uh, the pre-construction meeting took place a couple weeks ago, so that project is underway. Um, Recreation and Parks Department, Prescott Park. Um, Recreation and Parks received approval from the county to move forward with the project. So they'll they'll be putting together a request for proposals in the next few weeks and they hope to award the bid by the end of April. Moving on to the wharf hydrant replacement project. That bid opening took place um, last week. And the lowest bid was $208,800 from Mainline Engineering Construction. So that project will be underway soon. Capsule Minor Home Repair, they just submitted an invoice um, for our review. So it's uh, it was about 60, almost 67,000 and they have about 5,000 remaining, so. They're on track with their contract. Communify Minor Home Repair. The agency has four pending approvals and eight jobs that are currently with the contractor for installation. And Communify is bringing two new contractors on board as well. And they also stated that they're on track with, on track with um, expending their funding for the year. And this contract's a a carryover from fiscal year 2020-21. Good Samaritan Shelter, Kitchen and Dining Room Overflow Shelter, the final invoice has been submitted. Um, so we're just waiting on the final reports. Public service update. Um, everyone's been submitting invoices. There's only one agency that has not submitted an invoice, which is Food Bank, but they confirmed that they will be invoicing this quarter. They were just wanting to meet their um, Exhibit B uh, goals. So that, that's all they were waiting on. So we, I don't see an issue with them not submitting on time. But that's all I have. Um, does anyone have any questions? Well, that's it. Thank we'll you, Alicia. Up the agenda again. And circling back, Rosalie, to the question you had about ethics training and a deadline, I cannot mm -hmm. find anything that says there is what the deadline is. I know there's there's probably a deadline, but I can't find what that deadline is. It's not like the Form 700 where there's a hard deadline. Uh, nice. But I will find out. I, I will send a message to our city clerk and I will find out what that deadline is. Okay, but then. I don't, uh, did you take, did you, do you remember, Rosalie, if you took ethics training last year? Yes, I did. Yeah, so you, you should be okay because I don't see you on the list. Um, the ones on the list are Jason Tamura, Ivan Teniente, Angel Lopez, Jose Aguilera Galvan, Isaac Berumen, Angie Bolden, Jennifer Camacho Tiburcio, Ryan Fisher, and Patricia Solorio. Oh, okay. Those are the ones we have on the list for ethics training, um, and it's every two years. 
Thank you. I just submitted Rosie last uh, last week. I submitted already to the clerk and Bella also. I oh, submitted. wonderful. Thank you. Do, Isaac, Isaac, by uh, any chance, do you remember seeing anything when you went on? Um, uh, uh, they're saying there was a deadline as to when it was. I, I don't see any deadline, I believe, as long as you are acting as a politics or member of any any board, you have to do it during the, that year, I believe. As far as I see, there is okay. any deadline. I already got it. It's submitted to Bella and the city clerk. Okay. Got it already. All right. Um, I will. I will. But I. I will. I will get more information on that and then email the entire committee just so everybody's on the same page. That's a good question, Rosalie. Should we move on to number six, Ryan? Yeah, please go right on ahead. Okay. So just a brief update on the CDBG CV funding round three. Uh, not much has changed since last month. We are just still moving forward with uh, getting the ball rolling on both the Wi-Fi project and the Boys and Girls Club projects, but those are well on their way. The contracts have been issued and we're just, you know, waiting to to hit the ground running. Boys and Girls Club is confident that it'll get done um, in a timely fashion. Uh, the Wi-Fi project will take a little longer just because it's a, the, um, it's, it's a little more extensive. Um, the work is a little more extensive, but um, that is uh, also moving forward. Any questions on, um, on those projects? Okay, should we move on to number seven? CDBG process for fiscal year 22-23. So the first item is the debrief of deliberations process and clarification on Block Grants Advisory Committee direction. So staff was just hoping to get clarification. We just wanted to make sure that we interpreted what was shared at the, at, at the last meeting um, for one item. And then the other part of it is just to debrief, to kind of talk about what worked, what didn't work, what we can do next year to make things easier for all of you. So um, I'll just I'll just um, address the 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 clarification that we would we would like uh, very quickly, and that is toward the end of the minutes on page four at the very end. We just wanted to make sure that we, we, we captured everything that was agreed upon. And that is that if the final HUD out, it's, it's for one of the contingencies for capital. If the final HUD allocation is more than anticipated, funding will be added to come unify until the agency is allocated 100,000, which is the maximum, or until funding is exhausted. So let's say Com Unify gets funded 100,000 and we still have funding left over. If there is additional funding left over, what, what, what I heard was that it would go to ADA improvements. But we, we just wanted to clarify because it was, it, the, initial, the initial recommendation was to have any extra money go to ADA and then another recommendation came in that Com Unify should get more until it reaches 100,000. And then that was what was adopted. But I just wanted to, just in case we have more money left over, that additional money would go to where? The ADA, which was what was originally proposed? I have, I have a question with the ADA. Do you do you know that they're going to need additional money? They will. Oh yeah, the ADA yeah. is one of those projects that you could throw in five million dollars to it, and there'll still be another five million dollars worth of projects. So it's one of those where the more money they get, the more sidewalks they can fix, or not fix. I shouldn't say fix. They can they can redo right, right. because yeah. yeah, we can't fix things, but we can redo things. Um, but, uh, and the less money, the less sidewalks they can do, but it's one of those projects where 
uh, more money, they can do more, less money, they'll just do less. So yeah, they can always use the extra funding. Yeah, that's my understanding and because it's the catch-all and so it it's, makes it clean if we end up having a surplus. Yeah. Would I they have to, okay. sorry, quick question. Would they have to um, document or show us where that additional funding would go to if they did? Oh yeah. Yeah, most definitely. We we need to know exactly where, because we also have to make sure that all the areas that are using CDBG dollars are low to moderate income. They can't use the money for areas that are not considered low to moderate income. So yes, they would have to show us exactly where those, so we would know exactly where that money was spent. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. Okay, we just wanted to make sure Alicia and I and Tash kept hearing it and you know, that's what we thought, but we just wanted to make sure that that was what was implied was what we captured in the minutes and what we'll be sending over to council. Hey, Rosie, Ms. Isaac. Yes. Did we talk about to give some more money to the kitchen repair for oh, the Salvation Army, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, they received a lot more money. This is, also this is, uh, a, yeah, this is just to, ju because this is all basically because we don't know how much we're going to get from HUD. So yeah. um, in case our projections are off, and we get more money than what we projected, then we just have contingencies. So we don't have to kind of, we don't have to start the process over again. But yes, um, Good Samaritan, um, as it stands, is getting three hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars. Okay, so we already got the money. Okay, okay. Oh yes, yeah, they already yes, that's a good question as well. Yes, this is on top, this is an addition to what they've already gotten. Thank you, Rosie. Yeah. Any other questions on that before we open it up for discussion about deliberations? All right, the floor is yours. I'd love to um, get feedback on what worked, what didn't work, what you'd like to see for next year. Uh, this is Ron, just real quick on the, uh, it's not so much on the deliberation, it was more on the survey um, <clears throat> in regards to the monkey survey that we did. Um, not sure if we would be doing this again next year, but if we do, uh, maybe we could have that information sent to us out, uh, sent out to us either the day before. So that way we could go ahead and do our ranking and not spend so much time inputting that information. We would already have our rankings and then we would just have to input them instead of trying to, you know, if you choose number, let's say, um, cap slow was number one for you, you put in number one. Well, now whatever was number one is blank. And you don't know what that was. Does that make sense? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I, I understand that. And I think it'd be good to have, the reality is the next meeting is probably gonna be in person and uh, any kind of ranked voting, uh, we'll figure out how to do it at that time. Um, it may just be the similar type of survey on your phones like we've done in the past. I think we did one in the past. I, remind me, Rosie, if, I, if that's correct. Didn't we do one when we had a, meeting at the library. Did we do a similar survey monkey or did we not do it until COVID restrictions? We didn't do it until we talked about it, but I think it was too late to do it um, when, we, when we were in person. But yeah, if we, if we met in person, we'd probably do something similar where it would just be sent to your phones and everybody would just be doing it. But I like the idea of, of what Ron suggested that maybe maybe the, the, the meeting before the February deliberation, so maybe the January meeting, we could show you exactly what that survey is going to look like, and you can play around with it so that you can familiarize yourself with the uh, with the um, the way that Survey Monkey operates, so that you're not trying to one figure out who you want to allocate funding to, and also try to figure out how to use Survey Monkey. So um, we do send out the worksheets ahead of time. 
for all of the committee members to look at and and so but but we could we could send it out to you in a survey monkey format um if that would be easier to dive like if that would just be easier to kind of get familiarized with what you would be looking at the day of um so yeah we could definitely do um a better job of making sure that that you're it's not the first time you you're seeing it um when you're on the hot seat we can do, Rose, we can do Rose, a, the, uh, rosie one. this is this is Rosalie. I had problems with the survey monkey because every time I went in and somehow I touched something and then everything had the same number and had blank and I had to start over again. And I had to do that, you know, several times. And that really made me nervous because I know there was a time, time limit. So, you know, to me, for myself, it wasn't fair because I don't know if I really rank what I wanted to rank when I had to start over several times. So I don't know what happened that I had to do that, you know, so. Uh, I maybe I'm not using it properly. Or I think it's just getting familiar with the survey monkey format. So just getting familiar with how that works because it is not. If you haven't worked used it before, it's not very um, intuitive. So it doesn't feel like it's an intuitive system. It's because it uses multiple different ways of ranking those numbers. So there's a drag option where you can drag the the, the organization that you want to the to the number that you want. But you can also put in the number. But if you put in the same number that's if you put in a number that's already in, it it zeroes out the the previous one. So it does cause a lot of problems if you're not familiar with it. So yeah, probably a then, practice run would be good. Right. Yeah, and when I when and then also when I try to uh, scroll whatever I try to scroll, then for some reason I touch something and it erased all my numbers. So I had to start over again. Yeah, I concur with Rosalie on that and the fact that also because you could only see a, a certain number of um, entities or, or organizations, the minute that you scrolled down, you didn't know where you were at as far as the number goes. So it, it was just a little convoluted, again, just in my opinion. This is this is great, great feedback and great information and we will we can also visit other outlets besides SurveyMonkey that might be a little more user friendly. That's the one we found that when we were doing research last year, uh, that was the one that we found that was the most user friendly at the time. But you know that doesn't mean it's the be all end all. So we'll we'll look into other ways. But I I I like the idea of of having you all see it ahead of time instead of being faced with it, you know, and telling you, you only have 10 minutes to, to look at it. And I should, I should, I should explain the reason that, because we did look into this too. We, what we wanted was to allow you, let's say we have, we have the part one deliberations on Tuesday, give you um, Wednesday and Thursday to fill it out and then submit it before our next meeting. That's what we had hoped. But when we checked with our city attorney, our city attorney said that that, was a, that could be seen as a violation of the Brown Act because you're technically making a decision or a recommendation while you're not operating in a public fashion if that makes any sense, even though you're collectively not, individually you are, and that collectively becomes a recommendation. And so therefore that's why we have to do it at the actual deliberations meeting. Um, so that's- I, Yeah, at least, yeah. That's, that's in an correct. effort to be, I mean, which is great to be transparent, but then it's, it's, it puts everybody under the gun. So if there's a way, but it doesn't mean that you can't have, it doesn't mean you can't have kind of an idea and you can't, you can't have it on paper. It doesn't, that doesn't mean you can't do that and come to the table ready to go. It just means that the actual survey that you submit, the official submittal has to be done in a public fashion. And that's why, unfortunately, we have to do it that way. But I understand how you know, nerve wracking that can be.
Thank you. Another an, an, um, another thing um, that we, uh, uh, because Alicia Tasha and I discussed, we, we debriefed after deliberations and Alicia had a really, really good idea um, when it comes to contingencies, because it does seem like contingencies always um, seem to be, it's, it's, it's one of those things that it's just, it's kind of hard to process. Um, and so there have been times where we've adopted contingencies that seem to work pretty well. So the recommendation was made that maybe next year, what we do is we bring to you two or three options for contingencies that might work best and then have the committee either uh, rec uh, adopt one of those recommendations, one of those contingencies, or you could come up with your own, but at least you'd have a base, you'd have something to start, some, you know, a, a jumping off point, um, whereas right now we're just kind of throwing you out into it and you guys are having to come up with something from scratch. So if there's some contingencies that have kind of proven to be best practices, then we can definitely bring that to you and then you can go from there. I, I, I don't know what the thoughts are on that, but that was just something we, we talked yeah, about. Yeah, I, th I think that's a good idea. I think that'll be helpful. And then um, we can even maybe wade into some of that in the initial deliberations. We can maybe by initial deliberations, have um, have your guys' suggestions at that point so that we can kind of at least look at them and then it gives us time to think about them over the, in between the two meetings. But uh, realistically, we're probably gonna wanna go with what you guys recommend because we're gonna wanna do what's easiest for city staff and most efficient. Um, and you guys are dealing with it every day. So you'll know what's best. Right. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it just it just depends too because sometimes the contingencies come from maybe not being able to like for example you can't fund an agency fully but then the contingency would allow you to fund them fully so sometimes the contingencies have to be created you know when when the when the allocations take place but um, we just thought well maybe we could you know give them some ideas and then they can take it or leave it or work from there. Any Anything else that worked, did not work? Um, no, all right. Hey, Rosie, it's Tim. Not too bad. Um, hi, Tim. Yeah, hi. Um, well, I, I fought the survey monkey at first, but I, I guess it was a fairly um, a fairly decent way to do it. Um, uh, I, I prefer, obviously, talking about this stuff rather than doing the survey. But like Ryan says, next year will be a different year. And we'll probably have some different, uh, hopefully we'll be able to meet in person by then. Um, so I'm sure we'll pick this thing up as we go, but having those contingencies, that sounds like a good idea. I think they don't take long. Uh, we, we usually have a pretty good idea what to do with them, but any ideas would probably be very helpful. So, um, yeah, the survey monkey isn't my favorite, but, um, hopefully next year, um, we'll be back and, and we, and we won't be using it. So other than that, I, 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 I thought it went pretty well, actually. Yeah, I mean, on our end, you you all did a, a phenomenal job and you were all prepared and asked really great questions uh, during part one of the deliberations. And then when it came time to, you know, the hard part, which is to have to decide who gets what and how much, 
it, I think everybody did an amazing job and there was a lot of um, great discussion and also great discussion participation and just overall, um, uh, everybody just worked really well together to come up with the best recommendations that the that collectively the the committee saw fit to present to city council. So we appreciate that. And of course, again, Alicia and Tosh did an amazing job of getting everything ready. Really, honestly, they they did so much work to make sure that everything was uh, ready to go for you all. So um, definitely great team effort all around. So we we really really appreciate it. Um, I say I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Uh, HUD and other cities around the area are all very impressed by our CDBG funding process. Uh, we are not required to have a committee. Uh, this is not a HUD requirement to have a committee, but we, the city, decided to form a committee decades ago because it felt that it was the best way to really truly have these dollars um, be community dollars if the community is the one making the recommendations uh, to to as, as to how to use the money uh, appropriately so I, i'm i'm super proud of of the way it's been set up and like i said i i still have agencies reaching out asking us to share with them our process and share with them, you know, what the committee does and how the committee does it and and um, just our CDBG funding process in general. So, um, and, and, and as far as public participation and getting the, the community involved, uh, that's one thing that we've always excelled in with HUD. So a knock on wood that we continue to impress them, which I don't see why they wouldn't be impressed, but that's a big testament to all of you and everything that you do for our community. And, and it's not easy. What you all do is not easy. Um, really, you're working hard all year round. Uh, and, you know, whether it's, you know, getting ready for the needs workshop or going in a, in, 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 and coming up with the priorities for the year and then reviewing applications and then site visits and deciding who gets what and how much and and then it starts all over again. So thank you again. Uh, you all just just so proud and so appreciative of the work that you do. Rosie, uh, Rosalie, I have to say that uh, um, Alicia and Tash uh, gave us more information that was very helpful in making our decision and information that you know we needed it in any anyway, but it was there to help us out to figure out, you know, the monies, the budget, where they stood before, what was, you know, what's going on uh, with this agency. So I just want to thank you for doing an excellent job. I really appreciate the the assistance. Thank you. Yeah, I second that one. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So we're really grateful for all the support that we get from city staff. So we definitely appreciate it. Yeah, Alicia and Tash are a powerhouse, and you know they make they they make my life so much <laughs> easier. I mean, just the amount of stuff that they have, and it's just it's 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 wonderful. So yeah, we are very lucky. We're very lucky. Thank you, everyone. She's so modest. She even has the camera off. <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, should we should we move on to the overview of the drafted action plan public hearing on April 5th? Yes, please. All right. So really that uh, the drafted action plan is the big plan that we put together and submit to HUD. And that's what we tell HUD, what the plans are for the use of our fiscal year 22-23 funding. And that is drafted, Alicia and I have, and Tosh, um, Tosh is uh, helping us out as well with it, but we have drafted the action plan and it will go to uh, 
30-day public review from April 1st through May 2nd. And in during that time is also when we'll have the April 5th public hearing before the city council. So during that time is when we present it to the public, the public can review it, can read it. And it's really a formal document that explains how the money, the funding is gonna be allocated and, and you know who's gonna be served and all of that information that HUD requires us to put in the plan. Once that is approved by, well, that will be reviewed and preliminary approved by council on April 5th. And then we'll go back to council on Tuesday, May 3rd for the final adoption of the action plan. And then it will be submitted to HUD before the May 17th deadline, because we have to submit it 45 days before the start of the fiscal year. The only way that we will not submit it before May 17th is if a HUD tells us do not submit because we don't have we don't have it together yet. And the only way that'll be is if they still haven't received, they still haven't provided us with our final numbers. So if they haven't provided us with our final numbers, they'll give us an extension because they ne don't necessarily want us to submit something that doesn't have the final numbers. So we will keep you posted on that. So far, we have not received the final numbers. I'm hopeful we will get the final numbers in the coming weeks but we will see. Um, I did get something about two weeks ago that made it sound like we were gonna get, not we, but just in general, CDBG was gonna get less funding this year, but I don't know if that means we will get less funding this year because I don't know what census data they'll be using. If they'll be using old census data or they'll be using new census data census data. So again, it's just the waiting game at this time. But for now, for us, we have to keep going because as of now, we still have that May 17th deadline. And I did speak about the April 5th meeting, which is the public hearing. You do not have to attend as committee members. However, you are more than welcome to attend. And of course, we always love having committee members attending. It will be an in-person meeting, although they will have a, a virtual option if you would like, but you are also uh, able to attend in person at City Hall. Um, so it is always nice to have committee members there um, just because once in a while uh, the City Council does like to hear from committee members and, and actually will ask committee members questions. So again, it's not mandatory, but uh, highly encouraged. And if, if you can, it, it's interesting to see the discussion that they have uh, based on the the recommendations. So and and, and, and five thirty. You know, five thirty. Uh huh. The agenda. Uh, I'll send you all the agenda when it comes out. It does look like it's going to be heavy at the top with a presentation and proclamations. So our item, if I had to guess the way it looks right now. Uh, if I had to guess, our item will probably be on around 6, 6.15, something like that. But I'll, I'll, we'll find out soon enough. Right now, I just today I just saw the preliminary agenda. And then after that, we have the May 3rd, which is just a formality uh, to adopt uh, any, to adopt the resolutions associated with the plan. And other than our next meeting, which is scheduled for April 11th, our next Block Grants Advisory Committee meeting, I don't really have any pressing um, other key dates. Alicia, do you, can you think of any other major key dates in the coming months? No. We have covered everything. I have a question in regards to uh, next month's meeting is, are we going to be able to, well, are we going back to pers uh, in-person meetings? Uh, and there's a reason I'm asking for that. 
Yeah, no, I'm glad. Thank you. Because I had just told Ryan too at the beginning of the meeting that we were going to ask you all if you felt comfortable coming back. And I completely forgot to bring that up. So thanks, Ron. Uh, yes, uh, we do have the option of meeting in person again, if that is something that the committee feels comfortable with. Uh, offering a hybrid, we can, um, what we would do is we would probably do what we did a few months ago, which is just have you call in. Uh, doing a video hybrid right now in, in the moon room is not really that easy, but we could definitely do uh, either in person or you could call in um, like we have in the past. But or if if the committee wants, we can still meet via Zoom. It's really up to the committee, but we have options now. Rosie, for Zoom, well, if we do a hybrid with Zoom, um, since we have like a call-in phone number, maybe we could just call in on the line. And then I can, because we have the computer in there, so we can present on there as well. I don't know. Just an option. Does that computer have a, a camera, though? No, but it would just be like if we're showing anything. And then we can speak on the phone, but oh, they I just won't be saying. able to see us. Because oh, other than that, it would a, just no, be a that's call a good in. idea. Yeah, it's I not. like that idea a lot. That's a great idea, Alicia. You're so tech savvy. Um, um, Bob Doyle, I have, I so have a question. I, yeah. Um, are we going to run into any legal issues? Because um, the council has to have a, um, the government and the governor has us in an emergency situ situation, but if he cancels that, the COVID emergency situation, which could happen, then we can't have Zoom meetings anymore. Every 30 days, the council has to, I don't know if the council does, but on the other board I'm on, Every 30 days, we project out the next meeting and say we, we have to have permission for the Brown, because it's a violation of the Brown Act. Oh, yes. The council every 30 days is adopting a hybrid yeah. okay. um, meeting. Yeah, it is doing that. So actually, we and, just and covered it, this. It Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But basically, we just covered this today at the cemetery is that we can do um, in person uh, with also the availability for the public to call in, um, that would not be a violation of the Brown Act. So, ba ba so basically, as long as we're providing options and we're, we're being transparent about all those options, then we should be okay. Right, Ron, is that what you're saying? Correct, um, because again, it we just had our board meeting today at the cemetery and uh, council kind of reiterated what I just said. Patricia, you have a question? No, more, just a comment. Um, and if I'm being honest, the Zoom meetings have been super um, convenient. Um, I do see a lot of value and of course coming together um, for certain meetings. So maybe we can, I don't know, have a discussion about which meetings we should prioritize to be in person and which ones, you know, kind of regular meetings can be online. And that might be a really good um, compromise. Well, I can ask, is, is there anybody who doesn't want to have an in-person meeting next meeting? May I say something, please? Um, in-person is fine for right now while we're on daylight savings time. Uh, it's still daylight in the daytime. But when it start getting dark, I, like I'm one. After when it start getting dark, I don't want to be out there with so much going on on the street, you know. So we have to think, have to think about that too, because a lot of us are elderly and 
trying to drive home after when it's dark. But as daylight savings time, it's, it's fine with me. You know, it's also fine if you go to Zoom because some people may just want to be at home just like we're doing it right now. We're sitting at home on Zoom. You know, Zoom is fine too, which I love that we have Zoom anyway. Thank you. So I, I think we can do it in person and then do the hybrid model. And if, like if we need to, people aren't comfortable coming in, that's fine. They can call in or we can set up whatever we need to, to accommodate as we move along. Next month would be an act, uh, a good meeting to have, to try out the hybrid model because we don't have any action items that I, that at least we have at this time, the month is young, but so far all we have for April is just a recap of the public hearing. And that's just really just to let the committee know what happened at the meeting in case some, you know, the committee members weren't able to attend and haven't been able to watch the meeting and just wanted a very quick overview of what happened and how council, um, you know, proceeded with the recommendations, but it should be a very, very short meeting. So next month would be a really good meeting to try out the hybrid. Worst case scenario doesn't work out. You know, it's it's not a, it's it's not like um, we're we're we have any action items that we need to you know taken care of. Are we going to have a trial thing on a hybrid? Because I've never did a hybrid meeting before. Oh, well, a hybrid meeting, um, what that means is you have an option. You can either meet in person if you'd like, or you can call in just like you're doing now and um, or call, uh, um, and, and attend the meeting either virtually, uh, over the phone, or in person. So you have options. Yeah. Um, I, and, and I will, I will, I will make, I will double check with, um, our city attorney to just make sure that, um, whatever option we offer, if we do op offer a hybrid, if we want to proceed with that, that we are complying with the Brown Act and everything, um, that that entails. I do know our city council every 30 days is adopting uh, 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 approving the a resolution that says that they will continue to offer hybrid, and I don't see that stopping. And I know that that also encompasses the committees and commissions that are part of the city. But I will make sure that we are compliant with the Brown Act. And if for whatever reason they come back and say no, it has to be one or the other, or what, then I we will we will adjust accordingly and let the committee know. I have for now, a, we can move forward with a hybrid. I have one other question. The council yes. set, the, set a, did the council set a policy for absence? At one time they were gonna say you could not have, miss a meeting. Have they set that? Yes, so my understanding with that is that they um, are okay with us proceeding with our bylaws, at least for us, for the Block Grants Advisory Committee, I'm not sure what they decided with the commission, with the other, the, the planning commission, but the Block Grants Advisory Committee already had bylaws that have been adopted, whereas it sounded like other committees and commissions did not have active bylaws. So for us, they just decided to just have us continue abiding by our bylaws, which state that uh, three, three absences um, you know, uh, that that will spark a review by okay. uh, by council. Thank you. Because for me, then that makes the hybrid good at any time, because I know there's one meeting I've got planned a vacation. And I can always call in. So if we have that option, yes. you know, that, that would solve it. Thank you. Yeah, great question.
So with that, Rosie, I, um, if there's nothing else, uh, do we have any other key dates? No other key dates to speak of? Mm, no, no, we covered the key date for April and the key date for, for May. Okay, and then are there any reports from committee members? All right. Um, did you want to discuss proposed agenda items for the next meeting? Doesn't sound like we have much, but um, if you want to discuss it, we can do that. Um, sure. So far, we just have the recap of the public hearing that will take place on April 5th. But if there's anything else that the committee members would like us to add for the next for the next meeting for April 11th, please let us know. We'll be happy to put it on the agenda. Just remember that anything that we discuss has to be agendized. So if there is something that you'd like to discuss, we just make, need to make sure to put it on the agenda. Thank you. Um, so if no one has anything else, uh, I'll adjourn the meeting. I have uh, 621. So I'll thank you all for coming this evening. It's nice seeing everybody. Hopefully we'll get to see some of you in person at the next meeting. And uh, that's all I have. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Have a great night. Good night.